Welcome to the Operation Move podcast. My name is Zoe and uh, this week, start of a new year, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about how to get involved with the process because I think feel like it's sort of like a real, can be a real catchphrase, but like what does it actually mean? one of those things that I think that you sort of like see a lot in the uh, literature and evidence about uh, goal setting and behavior change and it's something that you see um, people bang on about myself included and I think it's just one of those things that we probably uh, often say it without even really thinking through like what that actually means and like actually separating out what is an outcome versus what is the process for example you could easily think about training as process related but you could also look at it as outcome related particularly if you have like there is this event that i want to do or there is this uh pp i want to set then it becomes less about the process and more about the outcome in that particular scenario. So I kind of like to think about it as the process is anything that you would still enjoy and get stuff out of and still do if it was guaranteed to fail. And that's sort of like an easy way for me to look at things that are like to do with um, the process of doing things rather than necessarily like what the outcome may be. And I think that, you know, like for most of us, like it's not like <laughs> separating out the process from the outcome is pretty hard. And the outcome is going to certainly in some ways cement the benefits of the process and they do relate to each other in a lot of ways. But if I look at sort of like what I'm doing in a week, like if I looked at an outcome based goal as say, for example, like um, a, you know, a PB at park run or like a half marathon time or something like that. And then I look at the things that are in place that ideally would help me achieve that. So they would be things like um, my run program, they would be things like uh, nutrition. They would be things like strength training. They would be things like sleep. Uh, they would be things like, you know, mobility and recovery, th those sorts of things. Now, if I look at those things and said, okay, so let's assume I'm never going to run that time that I have like as a, as a goal, what other things that I would still do because I enjoy the process of that independent of what the outcome is. And the reality is, is a lot of those things stay the same. So you might think, oh, well, you know, like, sure, you might like keep running uh, because there are a lot of benefits that are not about improving. But would you really be doing, you know, interval runs and tempo runs and, you know, like some of those harder workouts if you were never going to improve? And the answer is that, yes, I would, uh, because I think that there's so many mental benefits to doing something hard that are not at all like related to like getting faster or getting stronger. So because I like how I feel, um, not always during, <laughs> but definitely after. And I also like the feeling of, I guess, like competence it gives me as well. I think that there are so many things in our lives, particularly over the last period of time, which are out of our control and you know like it feels like some kind of version of failure everywhere you look so having a thing where you can go out and do something effort-based and kind of go I worked hard I got where I needed to get you know like that kind of thing even like today where like today was super 
<laughs> I looked at the weather last night, which I tend to do. And mainly because like, I would encourage you not to look at the weather if there's no choices that you can make related to the weather. But there are a couple of choices that I can make to do with the weather. So at the moment, particularly because it's school holidays and stuff, so a lot more flexibility in my day. So I kind of looked at the weather to see if the morning was going to be the best time to go. I should go at another time because it's been like pouring rain and so, so windy. And I can handle the rain, the wind. I have a far more fractious relationship with. So I looked at it and it looked pretty bad. (laughs) It's like raining and, you know, like up to 60 kilometer an hour winds. And I'm like, oh, like, do I, I could do this on the treadmill. It did not look like it was going to improve at any point during the day. And it's also one of those things where you have like, when I'm training six days, if I choose to do a session in the afternoon, then that is going to make, if I do the next session in the morning, then that next session in the morning could feel pretty bad because of the reduced recovery. So I'm careful <laughs> when I do stuff like that. So I looked at it and it looked bad. But I was like, no, I don't want to do this on the, um, on the treadmill. Um, but I went into it knowing that, it was the conditions were going to severely impact like what I was expecting. So, you know, like it's, you're still going to get stuff out of it, regardless of if you kind of like have a pace in your mind that you're aiming for or not. I tend to do a lot of my stuff much more on effort based. I know how it should feel even to the point where probably the last, no, like three months or so, I haven't even been wearing the, um, the chest heart rate strap because I just know what it's supposed to feel like and I get a fair amount of chafing um, just on the bra strap there where the heart rate monitor is and it just hasn't been worth it for me to wear it. So my point with that is just that it you don't have to sort of like necessarily like get the paces that you're hoping to get for you to get like a sense of Um, achievement and mastery and confidence from a session like that like I can look at that and know (laughs) that that was a really solid effort in the wind and um, even though I can't really go too much off what my uh, wrist heart rate was saying it does sort of indicate to me that does sort of confirm that I was in the right place for that so those are the things that I would still do even um, if I if it never improved, like what I get mentally um, and in terms of anxiety management and um, just uh, general productivity with the day and all of that sort of stuff is a lot. Uh, And those types of sessions are a key part of that. So I wouldn't really see uh, that if there was not that, if that outcome was never on offer, that anything would really change with, um, with my with my running and similar to with the um with the sort of the strength training stuff again like a lot of that stuff does tend to have this outcome component you know like and i think that only be human to like not want to sort of like go to the gym and have like a you know like a pb on your squat or your deadlift and that certainly helps you to sort of like feel like you're Uh, on the right track and everything like that and it sort of reinforces what you are doing but there are so many things that I get out of it that are not related to that Um, so I think that it is and I guess there's just such a wide variety of things that you can do at the gym like you can always be sort of like working on new skills Um, like in uh, PT we've been doing a lot of Um, bounding and rebounding which I'm well to start off with I was epically bad at I was like this is not like a good sign for running like this should be something that um, like it's very applicable to running so but it improved really quickly because it's a new skill and you put a little bit of focus on it and uh, you improve and so because you can always be learning new things 
um, I think that there's always that sort of like capacity in that environment. And even if I wasn't, I think it's a similar thing, you know, like I really um, like that, uh, that sort of the sort of like the level of like that feeling of having worked hard at the at the gym um and you know I like that feeling of um strength and all of that sort of stuff that I get from there as well as like all of the social stuff which I probably get a lot more at the gym than I would with running because I do a lot of running on my own um so again that would probably pretty much uh stay the same um and you know uh probably also and then you have uh the other aspects too like just similar with nutrition is like yeah like i might it might not have a running component but i certainly feel a lot better and um and also the same with like a lot of the sort of like the mobility and the recovery stuff as well. Like a lot of that, like half the time you don't even really know like how it's impacting like the outcome per se. I just know that I feel better when I do it. So I do it. So another way to think about it is less about it as, you know, like most things will tend to start as being like focused on an outcome but when you are sort of like focus on aspects of things that you enjoy, but also that have multiple impacts on other things. Uh, so, you know, like, yes, you might follow a running program to aim to sort of like improve a time or do well in an event or like feel good finishing an event, whatever it is. But, that thing is going to impact multiple things. Like all of a sudden it's like, oh, I actually love being outside and it's really awesome for my um, mental health because it really lowers my sort of like fight or flight stuff. Um, I feel like more equipped to handle the day and get more of my vitamin D. I sleep better because I've been active. You know, it then also like, keeps me on track with my food because I eat better when I'm being physically active and so all of that then feeds into the process because it has is not just like focused on one particular goal so that's another way to think about like keeping it based on the on the process is like yeah like one thing is going to impact multiple other things but it doesn't fall down if one of those things falls down. So, you know, you might be like, well, I don't care about vitamin D today <laughs> because like it's just one of those things that's kind of like hard to, you know, hard to exactly know like this is what I feel like when I'm getting more vitamin D versus where I'm not but some of the other things might come into it it's like ah uh, but I do have that meeting later on um or um I do feel like my mind is a bit you know busy and I want to get that sort of like meditation feeling and all, all that sort of stuff that can, that can happen. And there are some things that you can do with that to um, give you even more of that impact. Like some people probably hate this, but sometimes when I want a run to have more of that sort of like meditation focus, I will just play like one song on repeat and I get that for some people that would be super annoying. Uh, but for me, it is actually really calming. And so, you know, you can also have like these different like focuses for different sessions. And one of the cool things about keeping in the process is that when you do have things that come out of left field, like this event got cancelled or uh, you have a longer injury to deal with or a family commitment comes up or whatever it is that interrupts things, then 
it's unlikely to derail you because you're not in a situation of like, oh, well, I don't get to do that thing. So now like everything is pointless. And it's actually similar to even sometimes like if you achieve that outcome, that can be just as demotivating as not achieving it. Because if your only focus is a particular event or a particular time, once it's done, like why would you keep going? It's really common for people to have this like big event that's a big deal and then completely lose all motivation afterwards and then three or four months later go, oh, I haven't been around for ages and I don't feel great. What the hell happened? And it's because like once you don't have the goal, then you don't have it anymore. Even if the reason you don't have it is that you achieved it. And I think the other important thing to remember about the process is it's very distinct from just going through the motions. So, you know, like the process isn't just like sort of like getting in reps of a skill or whatever. So it's not like you just like if you're sort of like going, oh, I need to like practice my bounding or whatever. It's not you just jumping kind of like mindlessly (laughs) it's like kind of like jumping and then go okay that was pretty good like how could I improve that I'm going to try this technique instead then try that and going well that worked a little bit better but I feel like there's something happening um like maybe I'm not maintaining enough control on the descent maybe I could work on that so it's an active process And you're actively engaged in it, which again is like the really important thing with any kind of training is that as soon as you kind of like switch off that engagement, then it becomes a chore. And it's like, I have to go for a run today instead of like going, okay, so to, and even particularly on like easy runs, you know, like when you can focus on your form a bit particularly if there is oftentimes on easy runs there'll be like a stride component which is a great time to sort of like work on your um your technique and your cadence and um how your stride pattern is happening like all of that sort of stuff and not to make not to say that you can't like go out and do a run and enjoy uh, something without having to think about it, but not have it be a thing where you're like, oh, I've got to do this thing and then tick it off, which is part of the danger with some programs because they can, um, like particularly if you're like following sort of like an app-based program, it can very easily get into that zone because you're kind of like outsourcing uh, something like that to an app. And if you outsource your sort of level of engagement and participation to some extent, then it starts to become a chore and then you'll just start ignoring (laughs) when the app tells you to do something. (laughs) So um, if you are using a program like that, just finding ways to like keep it engaging and keep participating and sort of like looking at it and going, oh, okay, so it wants me to do um, this sort of distance at an easy pace, but I'm feeling really good today. So I'm going to do that like on a hill route instead of on a flat route and just as taking as much ownership of that program as you can. And for some people, you know, like part of staying within that process is going to be things like training diaries. But if you're like me, <laughs> it's like I, I feel like I really want to be the person who uh, writes things down in a diary. Uh, but so far, that has not actually been borne out by any kind of evidence. Although, to be fair, I think it's Also, the fact that I don't have a diary that I like, so I'm working on publishing one. But in the meantime, for me, the um, the sort of like online uh, 
option of diarising things probably helps the most, whether that's, you know, posting things on Instagram or Strava or wherever it is. So writing things down can help you engage with it, um, particularly helping with you being able to sort of like remember things uh, because you have a tendency to not really remember things that well at all when you're looking back on what you've done in the past. So I find it quite useful to um, just have some sense of how things felt rather than what they just look like on paper. So, you know, like obviously if you're using a GPS watch, you can look back and say, I ran this interval for like at this pace, but it's not really giving you a good indication of actually how you felt, which is a huge going to be a huge impact in terms of like how you feel about things going forward and also as a way to gauge progress you know because progress isn't always in sort of like times at a specific event at a you know or a specific race or whatever oftentimes it's just like I did this run which I've done like every week um on this loop and I felt heaps better like I felt like I had loads of energy or you know like I did these you know, tempo intervals and they actually felt really good and I felt pretty comfortable. Um, so things like that can, can really help, uh, help with it. I think, um, anything where you can really be in control of it as much as humanly possible. And part of that can be trying new things. Uh, one of the interesting things um, that you can do, like I have, um, I don't know how long I've had it for, probably a fair few months now, I would say. I've had one of those whip bands, which I mostly got to shame me into better sleep, which has actually worked. So that's good. <laughs> but um, one of the interesting things that you can do is like track a whole bunch of habits through it. So it has things on like, did you stretch today? You know, like, did you have a magnesium supplement, you know, like, did you work late? Like, and you sort of like pick what things you want to report on because obviously for some people, things aren't going to be relevant, but I have stretching on there. Um, and I had assumed that it would have like a positive impact on my recovery, but it sort of like compares the da days that I do do it versus the days that I don't. And so far, it's negligible, <laughs> which is sort of like an interesting thing. And it sort of like keeps me interested in trying new things. And it's not to say that I wouldn't stretch because I actually think that uh, it's good for me. I enjoy it. I find it relaxing at the end of the day, you know, like so it's saying that it doesn't have like an impact on my recovery doesn't necessarily mean I won't do it, but it also means it's like a, like maybe go after some other low hanging fruit, you know, which you would be, um, much more things like, uh, sleeping more, not having a device in bed, you know, um, all of those, all of those sorts of things. So tr it, trying things out and seeing how they work out for you you don't have to like use a device for that like you can just you know you can just try something and then see how you feel and see if on balance you feel better Some, most things are pretty obvious that way you know like when I started doing um drills before hard workouts made a night and day difference and I didn't need any other feedback other than how I felt because I felt loads better so just trying those things can also like help to keep you ticking along in that department too. so that is it for this episode I hope that uh, everyone is having a great start to their uh, their new year and you know like probably a lot of people back at work this week or some of us are still resisting that complete back at work until uh, until the week after as always if you have any questions at all that you would like answered on this podcast just uh, shoot me a message or an email and I will include them next time. If you would like some help on the 
process or programming department, um, then uh, check out Run Club. Uh, that is uh, always open to um, to new members. And you can also check out one-on-one coaching if you are wanting uh, something a bit more personalized and a bit more in-depth. And I will catch you next time. Thank you.